What advice do you have for people in that journey of figuring out what works for them? Because it can be infinite, right? It's like, it never ends. Well, I do think the fi- the four tendencies framework is helpful. Should I just quickly yes. explain Let's what that is? Let's go over the four types. Okay, the four types. So, right. So, yeah, I will explain this. And usually people know exactly what they are from just this brief description. But again, you can take the quiz at quiz.gretchenrubin.com mm-hmm. and it will give you an answer and a little report. But again, most people don't even need to do that. So what it looks at is how you respond to expectations. So there are outer expectations like a work deadline and there are inner expectations like my own desire to get back into meditation. So depending on whether you meet or resist outer and inner expectations, it makes you an upholder, a questioner, an obliger, or a rebel. So upholders readily meet outer and inner expectations. So they meet the work deadline, they keep the New Year's resolution without much fuss. They want to know what other people expect from them, but their expectations for themselves are just as important. So their motto is, discipline is my freedom. Then there are questioners. Questioners question all expectations. They'll do something if they think it makes sense. So they resist anything arbitrary, ineffective, unjustified. They need to know why. So they're making everything an inner expectation. If it meets their inner standard, they'll do it no problem. If it fails their inner standard, they push back. So their motto is, I'll comply if you convince me why. Then there are obligers. This is the biggest tendency for both men and women. You either are an obliger, you have many obligers in your life. Obligers readily meet outer expectations, but they struggle to meet inner expectations. So to meet an inner expectation, they have to have a system of outer accountability. You want to exercise more, work out with a trainer, work out with a friend who's annoyed if you don't show up, take your dog (laughs) for a run, raise money for a charity, do your duty to your future self, but you have to have that outer accountability. So their motto is, you can count on me and I'm counting on you to count on me. And then the final tendency is rebel. Rebels resist all expectations, outer and inner alike. They want to do what they want to do in their own way, in their own time. They can do anything they want to do, anything they choose to do. But if you ask or tell them to do something, they're very likely to resist. And typically, they don't tell themselves what to do. Like, they don't sign up for a 10 a.m. spin class on Saturday because they think, I don't know what I want to do on Saturday. And just the idea that somebody's expecting me to show up is going to annoy me. So their motto is, you can't make me and neither can I. (laughs) <laughs> so when you know your tendency, you know how to set your, you're, you're much, it's much easier to set yourself up for success because you think, okay, given my tendency, what are the kinds of strategies that tend to work for people that, of that strategy? So, you know, you might be working out with a trainer who wants to tell you like every bit of research and every scrap of fact to help you stay with your program. And you're like, I don't need to know all the why, why, why I need the accountability. Yeah. Basically, it's so empowering to know your type because then you know how to motivate that type. And then you also learn about the people in your life. Because like when I learned about these four types, I'm like, okay, I think I'm an upholder, maybe an obliger, but mostly upholder because I am I care about fulfilling both outer and inner, right? And then my boyfriend is a complete rebel. Like you can't make him do anything. He doesn't want to commit to anything, right? He doesn't... Ooh. That can be a tough combo. <laughs> right. So you have to learn to work with people who are so different from you. And also like learning as an upholder how to motivate a rebel, it's been very difficult. Yeah, they see the world so differently. They, they are opposites. And um, one, I will say for people who are listening who maybe are rebels or uh, are, are related or work with rebels, it's the, it's the most different tendency. I think it's the one that's the most misunderstood and as a consequence is often the most frustrated and most frustrating because people don't understand how to approach a rebel in a way that works for the rebel tendency. Like they will try to give them accountability or they will try Mm -hmm. to like, you know, lecture to them about reasons (laughs) or they will resist when a rebel is like, well, it's 2 a.m. I feel like doing it right now. And they're like, why don't you wait until the morning when I can help you? And it's like, no, don't say that to a rebel. Let a rebel do what they want to do when they want to do it in their own way. Like just back off. Don't give them a lot of encouragement. Don't give them a lot of reminders and nudges that will backfire for a rebel. So often people trying to help rebels actually make things worse. Mm. So what's the way to help a rebel then? One thing for rebels is that identity is an incredibly high value. They want to put their true selves out into the world. They're very, very authentic. And so it's like, if you are a rebel or you're trying to work with a rebel, is to be reminded of that, of that identity. So you're doing this 
not because somebody told you to, not because you said you would, not because you're supposed to, but because this is the kind of person you are. You're an athlete. You're a healthy person who likes to feel strong and energetic. You're a food lover. You're a responsible, responsive boss. You're a loving, considerate partner. You're somebody that I can count on. You're you're a high-minded person. You're an environmentalist. So once a person is like, I'm an environmentalist, then certain actions follow from that identity, which is not the way the other three tendencies think about it. It's they might have the same actions, but they, it comes from a different place. Or you yeah. can give information consequences choice. This is when you give a rebel information they need, you tell them the consequences of their action or inaction, and then like you let them choose. So you could say mm-hmm. something like, you know, if we pay this bill now, cool. If we pay this bill in two weeks, we're going to pay a $300 late charge. Right. You decide. <laughs> Use yeah, this information. You, you, you get to it. choose. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you can't can nudge. Freedom. You can't mm-hmm. nudge. You can't remind. You can't rescue. You can't intervene. You just like have to like let ships fall where they may. Um, one thing Rebel says, you have to let negative consequences follow. Um, but then a lot of rebels are like learn to do things like use auto pay because they're like one thing rebels don't like to do is things like pay bills over and over on time, which they just hate that feeling. Um, so it's like okay, put that on auto payment, and now you don't have to worry about it. 